47 degrees, it's raining. We're in Lexington, North Carolina. Kevin Rumley, Rumley Enterprises, less than 24 hours, hell, but almost less than 12 hours yes. after the car behind us won $20,000 with Kyle Larson. The Kyle Larson presents Flow Racing Late Model Challenge. We didn't know who was gonna win last night. We've had this scheduled all along. Road to Eldora, rolls into North Carolina. And man, what a night last night. I think the deck tells it all, Kevin, is I don't think anything says Kyle Larson more than what you see right here. Yeah, I think uh, I think it maybe helped us get to further to the cushion the more he knocked it off. <laughs> but yeah, we go through quite a bit of these, but he told me when he first sat down in the car to fit a seat in 2020, he was like, I'm very hard on right sides, be prepared. <laughs> well, no rest for the wicked. You got your crew out here. You guys are doing wash day in the rain the day after. I'm geeked out. We're gonna head in the shop here in a second, but real quick, how long have you guys been at this location? So uh, in 2017, uh, we decided to stop racing full time with the six car. Uh, we moved out of Labonte's and we needed a place, a shop closer to my house. Luckily, Dave at d and &E Marine had ties with Jonathan Davenport, longtime sponsor, his souvenir rig usually sits over there. Mm -hmm. um, he asked me, he had a building empty, and uh, we put a deal together where we can move in, and we've had a lot of fun together. Well, we're gonna move in, because it's starting to rain. Let's head in this bad boy, but we got we got the wash rig out here, now it's pouring. Now I've messed you up. You gotta wash the damn car, and I'm messing you up. <laughs> You're good. We're gonna head inside, and I'll tell you what, man, I love shops, and I love really unique shops, and Kevin, this one, when you walk in, I mean, it's just neat. The way you guys have decorated it, but the layout of it, and um, yeah, yeah, let's head in here and let's talk yeah. about it. All right, tell me about this building. So, it was initially half the size when you moved in. Yes. But then Kyle Larson starts driving for the team, and d and &E Marine decides to expand it? Yes, so in, in 2020, when we put this deal together with Kyle, um, I told Dave, Dave Fritz that owns the shop, I was like, hey, we were building a new car. I was like, hey, Kyle Larson's gonna drive this car. And he immediately thought I was making it up, <laughs> right? He couldn't even tell his friends because they would think that he was full of it. So um, we went and won Port Royal and he immediately started digging out dirt to expand the shop. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite part of this shop? I love, so for me, I have every check that we've ever won. Um, and, and there's meaning behind them all. So all the checks on this side of the shop are the ones that were wins prepared out of here. Okay. Uh, we got a lot of checks from my dad's shop. There was Steve Shaver, Steve Lucas. Um, we got all the checks from, from Davenport's era at Little Bonnie's, which is quite a bit. Yes. Pretty impressive collection. So before we hang them up, I scan them with my scanner and log them digitally. So I'll always have them. So this place, really, you talked about when you guys decided you weren't gonna go full-time with the six, you come here, you did some different things, but you told me in 2017, that's when it really turned the corner and you guys really started accomplishing some things. And maybe the biggest thing to that, your point in your career, talk about 2017 and what this building represented. Yeah, so 2017, we, we wanted the shop to be an R&D shop where I can just come, be as messy as I wanna be, be alone, get as much help as I needed at times, and just build things. Build things that are crazy, not normal, think outside the box, and be very original. Uh, so the first race one out of the shop was the 2017 World 100 with Davenport God, and J.R. Davenport, Smith, yeah. yes. So that, that's, a, that's a cool story, and we'll go down later and look at the World 100 trophy. It's pretty special. You guys had done a lot, but when you get to the point and you're on, on that stage, and let's back up. You told me you were so confident that you and the guys went and got haircuts because you knew you were gonna be on that stage. Yeah, so, right so Davenport, uh, Brian Liverman, and myself, we all went and got haircuts because <laughs> we knew we were gonna win that race. We just had that confidence and that feeling. So once you do that, I dare say you're a confident guy. I don't think you're an arrogant guy. I think you're a confident guy. If your confidence is here, what happens after you win that World 100? Uh, I mean, uh, I'm very confident in myself. I'm very hard on myself. Uh, you kind of get this gut feeling if what you're doing is the right thing to win races or not. But I had a long time to think about it. Between 16, the end of 16, and that race. That race, we really started manipulating rod heights and deck heights with springs. And we had this strategy, and, and I knew some of the other guys weren't doing it. so. Uh, very confident going into that race. Kevin, we're actually out in front of the shop and you talked about D&E Marine and what they've meant, not just to you, but racing in general. 
But not only do you need everything for your marine needs, proudly in here, tell us about what we're looking at. Yeah, so this is the World 100 Trophy from the 2017 World 100. It was, it was the first race one out of the shops. So it's pretty special to us. Uh, Dave and Evelyn had a, had a case built for it and it's, it's very special for them and the community is here as well. We talk, we talk about sponsors all the time. I, as an announcer, I try to hit them, but what has DNE Marine meant to you and your family and your race team? Yeah, so, so Dave and Evelyn is basically the glue that holds this whole deal together. So the glue that sticks it together, that, that enables us to race, enables us to do what we want to do, enables us to do consultant for Longhorn and Bill Stein. So very fortunate that uh, we crossed paths. And the 17-year-old, it's going to grab the lead it's not at a turn number two. Down the back straightaway, John of the Davenport by half a car lane. JD, that GR Smith rocket into turn number three. The 2015 winner of the World 100 back out in front in 2017. What do you think you've gained along the way that's allowed you to separate yourself from everybody else and what you do with these cars? Well, so pretty much I was born a racer and I went to UNC Charlotte in engineering school to be trained in engineering, motorsports engineering. Uh, I went to school to become a better racer. Uh, needed a job. Our family was racing part-time at the time. I believe it was Billy Hicks was there when I graduated college and Steve Lucas started driving. Uh, went to work at the engineering department at CB Products in Exeldyne that had a lot of ties with motorsports. So I got to work with all the engineering groups in NASCAR and absorbed a lot. Had a lot of friends, a lot of fans that liked what we were doing. Uh, then it got to a point when we moved into Labonte's and did the Longhorn deal um, with Justin and Terry, uh, I needed to make a decision. So it was very hard to quit and go full-time racing, but I was scared to death, but it was something I always dreamed of doing. So that's what we did. Uh, luckily, we had a great driver of Jonathan Davenport and a good friend that, that helped us develop this stuff and learn. To speak to how expensive this sport is, you guys go out in 15 and you win freaking everything. But I heard as you get late in the year, still, the team really doesn't make any money because no. what it costs, is it true or false? It, yeah, it was, it, we, could, we struggled to get to the racetrack, but we had a lot of help and a lot of friends. So that year, my dad was retired from full-time work, so really didn't have a solid source of income. Uh, Terry went out and found us a sponsor, which was Flowback Well Testing mm -hmm. and Sundance. Uh, that helped us, but it took a while for that money to kick in. So we decided, we decided to go full-time Lucas Oil Racing because Jonathan wanted to win his first championship. And we knew we had to do it with raw speed because we never really went out on the road. We didn't really have the resources, but we had a lot of help. We were building our own engines at the time. That was, that was a challenge, but my dad loved it. So his, we converted his small shop in Greensboro to the engine shop. So I would work on cars during the day, go to a shop and build engines at night. Losing your dad back yep. in 2020, was there any part of you that wanted to just walk away from racing? No, not at all. Really? The, 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 the last day that he was himself, Jonathan Davenport wanted to come see him. So he met me at the shop and we went to go see him. Had a great conversation and Jonathan said his farewells and I was talking to him and I never run out of stuff to talk about racing wise, but I felt like it was closure. So he knew what was happening. We ordered a trailer and he knew we were gonna have great success with Kyle Larson. And he got to see the first win on TV. So it's pretty special. Do you have a favorite memory? I know you talked about Stick Elliott race, but do you have a favorite memory either in the shop or at the racetrack with your dad? Um, there's lots of them, like even, even the 2017 World 100, he went and he, he loved Jonathan, loved how he drove. Uh, so that was, that was pretty special. The last win, so with a six car at Lernerville, the last crown jewel he was in victory lane was with Tim McCready at the Firecracker. And we never won that race, so that was pretty special. I think you guys, again, Leroy Rumley, Kevin Rumley, there's so much in the sport. Along the way, have you ever, it's a family. Your family's been in it. Have you ever got jaded by the sport, though? Um, I had a hard time. So, so being successful is the hardest thing for me to overcome. Like, you have friends that come out of nowhere, 
that only like you for what you know or only want to use you up for what you know and really don't care about you. So that was a little tough to get used to. And then understanding, understanding the impact I was having on the sport rules wise. Like for me, drawing a part all night, drawing a new suspension up, emailing it to my friend uh, that had a fab shop, Dan <laughs> Kingan, and he cuts it out in the water jet and I take it straight to Longhorn and bolt it on the car. That was very intimidating for the industry. Uh, for me, I took it for granted because it's what I did. That's what I was trained to do. Um, but other teams, You weren't trying to rock the boat. You just no, did. No. So everything I did was to solve a specific problem that we had. So that was very intimidating for the industry. And I took it the wrong way in the beginning. But uh, with every difficult life lesson, you definitely learn from it and learn how to overcome it. Looking ahead to Eldora. Obviously, you guys hit and miss Eldora because of Kyle's schedule. But... You talked about 17, getting your haircuts, having your picture taken on the stage. When you hear the words Eldora Speedway, what comes to your mind? I mean, it's the greatest place on earth for dirt racing. It's the nicest facility, uh, the biggest fan base that loves dirt racing, and it's just truly special. So uh, directly and indirectly, been very fortunate to be on the stage a lot. So that's, um, I think that's the pinnacle of our dirt racing. And it's, it's tough. I mean, it is a race. Like, everything has to go perfect, and you have to be the fastest car to win.